Hey everyone, so today I'm asking the golden question for vehicle autonomy. Cameras only, or cameras and radar? Well, I guess we'll find out what Rivian's answer is today. In some recent testing I did with my Rivian, I found out that the Rivian autonomy system is now in full control driving the vehicle, and the mobilized system that it was previously relying on is no longer active. So the next question that I naturally had was trying to figure out how much of the sensor suite around the vehicle is actively being used. We have team camera only, which this has lots of cameras, but there's also some radars all around the vehicle. And I'm not exactly sure how much of each kind of sensor the Rivian autonomy system is using. So I figured I'd take you along for the ride. But before we go doing experiments with it, I'm just gonna do a quick walk around to kind of show you where the sensors are. Okay, so first let's talk cameras. Of course, first we have the windshield cameras. We've got two that are part of the Rivian system, presumably a wide angle and a more narrow angle. And of course the mobile eye camera that is no longer being used to drive the vehicle. Also along in the front, don't mind the bugs. I've been doing a lot of driving for Labor Day weekend. Uh, we have a bumper mounted camera. This is what we see in road cam footage. And then on the side here, we also have a forward facing camera on the mirror. We have a rearward facing camera on the mirror and we have a downward facing camera on the mirror. This is the camera that you see when you turn on the turn signals. This is the camera that you see when you have the surround view overhead shot. So that's basically a complete picture of the cameras. As far as radars go, we have five of them. We have one that's dead center right here in the fascia. This is the one that is primarily used when doing adaptive cruise control and things like that. We also have four corner radars. There's one on each corner of the bumper in the front and also one on each corner of the back. The one that's in the center is a little bit unique as it's a 2D imaging radar. It can not only tell how far an object is, but it can tell exactly left to right and up down where the object is as well as how far. So pretty neat. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in and do some testing. Okay, so we're just about ready to go. And the plan is to first cover up the cameras and see what kind of behavior we get on the driver's display and possibly driver assistance as well. And then we want to cover up the radars. But before we get to that, I just wanted to go for a little spin with the cameras uncovered and the radars uncovered just as a baseline to see how things look under normal circumstances. Okay, what better place to see how the driver's display is working than in a Walmart parking lot? We've got all kinds of things happening here. We've got vehicles looping around through. We've got some people. We've got cars at various angles, different kinds of vehicles. Um, man, can I just say we have come a long way with the Rivian driver's display. Um, it's, it's made a lot of big leaps for sure. Um, but this is definitely, you know, a pretty good view of how we're getting all of our sensor data. I suspect that a lot of our sensor data here, um, is actually radar as well. Um, one place that you may see that radar show up the, where it does make a really big difference is when you're sitting at a stoplight and you've got cars stacked up in front of you. Um, a lot of times on camera only vehicles, what you'll see is just the car in front of you, but any cars in beyond that in the line don't really show. It can show a big, huge, wide breadth of everything else going on at a very big distance at other angles, but just because the angle directly in front of you is obstructed by the car in front of you, you can't really see beyond that. But a lot of times Rivians with uh, radar and sometimes older Teslas with radar as well, will show even more vehicles in front of you, two, three, four cars in front of you um, under ideal circumstances anyway. Uh, so you can definitely tell that there is some radar happening, at least I suspect, but uh, I guess we'll see as we start covering up sensors exactly how things are going to react. Um, but let's go ahead and put some tape on the cameras and see where we get. Okay, so I've gone ahead and taped up all of the cameras around the vehicle, and I've actually left the mobile eye camera untaped because theoretically we're not using that anymore. I have a suspicion that even though it's not doing any of the driving anymore, it may still act as a failback for the visuals. So we'll see, but I've got all of the mirror cameras covered. I've got the bumpers camera covered front and back. Um, and uh, let's do a little test and see what this looks like. We may end up taping over the mobile eye camera too, just to see what the visuals change. All right, well, um, we definitely have some tape on the uh, cameras. I guess now's a good time to say, 
this is a great time to be extremely aware using my eyes and mirrors just like the olden days because uh cameras aren't much help okay so i've got the cameras covered up everything except for the mobile light camera and um <laughs> yeah you can see things are flickering around all over the place it's doing a decent job tracking the vehicle in front of me um but uh yeah stuff is shaking around all over the place i i have a suspicion that we're not really doing anything with the mobile light camera if it's in play at all it may be like identifying some objects um but it seems to be misidentifying most everything i'm gonna take another circle around the parking lot here and just see you know what identification looks like um we've got a minivan off to the right here let's see if that oh oh, oh that's a semi oh oh no it's a truck yeah no i i don't think that it's able to see it all i think i'm gonna go ahead and say that the mobile light camera is not in play even for the visuals um yeah it's it's just <laughs> yeah the things happening on this screen are absolutely insane here um i'm gonna drive down the road a little bit and see if it comes up with any warnings when i was doing some preliminary testing on this it almost immediately came up with a warning for the uh, cameras on the windshield being blocked and additionally it came up with a warning for the cameras on the mirrors being blocked that's new on all of the testing i've done on any previous software version i've never seen a warning for the cameras on the mirrors before of course right now when i'm filming it's not showing any of that um so i'm just gonna get out on the road and see what it gives us okay and now there's our warning we have the clear front camera warning we still haven't seen anything for the side cameras but we at least did get a front camera warning there. And since we have that front camera warning, it of course won't let us enable cruise control or highway assist or any of the driver assistance features for that matter. Okay, so I just had to be sure here and pull over. You may notice that there's a lane line being shown on the display here. What's interesting about that is, again, all of the cameras are covered and I'm on a road that does not have lane lines at all. I just had to be sure what was happening so i did tape over the mobile eye camera just in case but that honestly didn't change any behavior here um the ai system seems to be hallucinating the existence of lane lines um what's really interesting though is the lane lines it's showing are honestly decently accurate to what would be on this road if there were lane lines it's following the curvature of the road um very interesting uh so the the machine learning platform certainly understands what lane lines are and what they're supposed to look like and how they're supposed to behave on a road um i'm just finding it very interesting that it's inventing lane lines that don't exist and it's inventing lane lines that more or less match what this road should be having um, so I'm not entirely sure if that's something that it's basing off of map data, if it's just able to sort of read the curvature of the road through the radars. Very interesting behavior for sure. Okay, so the next test I want to run is to cover up the radars. But first, there's something else I want to do. I want to uncover the main windshield cameras but leave the rest of the cameras covered up. The reason I want to do this is in previous version of the autonomy system, which were mobile eye based, the surround cameras had no influence whatsoever on highway assist. It was just the windshield cameras and a little bit of radar input. So I'm curious if that's changed at all. So I'm going to go ahead and uncover the windshield cameras, just the Rivian ones. We'll leave the mobile eye covered up and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've gone ahead and uncovered the Rivian windshield cameras, left the mobile eye and all of the bumpers and mirrors covered up. Um, but an interesting thing that I'm noticing here is the warnings immediately went away. No mention whatsoever of the surround view cameras, the mirror cameras being covered up. So I'm just not entirely sure what triggered it the last time I saw it. Um, but for whatever reason, this time around, that's where we're at. Um, I can immediately tell that the visuals were looking a little bit better. Um, as soon as we get onto the highway here, hopefully we can get a sense for that. But already it's able to very clearly identify that that is a semi truck in front of us. So even though the, the surround cameras are indeed covered, it's definitely having a lot easier time identifying vehicles on the highway. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on highway assist here. Okay, so far so good. Let's attempt the lane change. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh, we're changing back now. <laughs> All right. Um, that was weird. That is definitely not something I can say that I've experienced with uh, highway assist under normal circumstances. So based on that, oh my goodness, the visuals, wow, interesting. So I don't know if you caught that right there. That car was just swinging around all over the place on the visuals. And then as soon as the front camera caught it, then it just immediately stabilized. So radar is a little bit unreliable all on its own. You definitely need some cameras to go with it. Um, we're gonna let this other car behind us go by and then I'm gonna attempt another lane change. Um, but it definitely seems that it's relying on the cameras a fair bit too. And boom, stable. Very, very interesting. It gives you a very clear picture of how far out the cameras on the windshield can see and what the limitations of just the radar are. Okay, we're going to attempt one more lane change here. And that one was successful. Okay. Very interesting things that we're learning here, everyone. This, this, is, this is very cool testing. All right, let's go ahead and try a lane change again. Um, all right. That seems to be okay. Oh, interesting. And we just completely gave up there. The ley lines did continue to stay quite visible in the exactly the same way that they always do. Um, I guess we'll just slow down here for this person. Uh, but yeah, that was definitely an abrupt takeover. So, Okay, this is very interesting. Uh, we have Highway Assist back working now, and it is working okay. So what I'm learning is it relies very heavily on the windshield cameras for steering, which makes sense, that's nothing new. As far as surrounding awareness, um, it definitely leans heavier on the radars. That's obviously given the fact that it is actually letting us drive with the cameras blocked, but that doesn't mean the cameras aren't playing a role like before. Unlike with the mobilized system, we are using all of the cameras around the vehicle. Um, it is interesting that it's letting us drive even with those blocked. I suspect that that's because Rivian wanted to build a robust system that relies on more than one kind of sensor. So that way, if you have snow or mud or something that's covering up one of the sensors, it doesn't just completely cripple the system. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the tape off and go for the radar test now. Okay, this looks completely ridiculous, um, but I've got all of the radar sensors covered up. Um, what I've done here is I've got some rags with some aluminum foil inside of them. Um, so hopefully that will be enough to block them. Um, <laughs> this will almost definitely make the uh, autonomy system very angry with blocked radars. So I don't think we'll be able to test highway assist, but we can at least look at the visuals. Okay, so we're taking off with all of our radars covered. Surprisingly, it hasn't thrown any warnings yet for the radar. I wonder if, yeah, cruise control will let me go. Um, this is very interesting. So either it hasn't realized yet that the radars are covered or I just didn't do a good enough job of covering them. I guess we will see momentarily here. I'm just gonna keep driving around a little bit. Um, I want to check out a parking lot as well, just like we did before with the camera cover and see if it makes any difference for the radars being covered. Okay, so we finally got the warning for the radar being covered. Um, but as you can see, the visuals are still working very well. I'm just driving through a parking lot here um, and it's actually doing very well just with cameras. Uh, definitely took it a second for it to realize that the radars were covered, which I guess that's how those things go. It just takes a minute for getting sensor rings, but it's identifying vehicles correctly. They're relatively stable. They're jiggling around maybe a tad more than they normally would, um, but it's definitely leaning more heavily on the cameras here than it is on the radars because all of this looks pretty darn good. Um, very interesting indeed. So basically the message that I'm getting here is I can see exactly how a camera primary system would be just fine or a camera only system would be just fine. 
Um, so there's a couple reasons that I think Rivian has gone with a Radar Plus camera. Uh, number one is for redundancy. As you could see when we were driving on the freeway, um, even though the cameras were covered, the system was still functional with just the radars and the front camera. So we have a little bit of redundancy so that the system doesn't get completely crippled if like there's a little bit of snow or a little bit of mud or something like that building up. Um, another reason that they probably wanted to go with radars and cameras is because it sort of makes up for having a lack of fleet size. Tesla can get away with having just cameras and even less megapixels worth of cameras because they have a huge fleet that they can collect data from. Rivian doesn't have that luxury. They have a much smaller fleet. And so in order to make up for that, they need to have a lot more and high quality sensors. Um, so I think those are two reasons that they lean on having multimodal sensors, radar and camera. But to be honest, this is a very clear picture that if they wanted to go with just camera, that's definitely a viable solution for the future. So we'll see. Uh, this has definitely been a very interesting experimentation. I'm glad that you came along the ride for me. I certainly learned a lot from what's happening. Um, so basically, in a nutshell, what we saw was when it comes to cameras, while they definitely are secondary for highway driving, they still definitely do paint a picture and the system uses all of the cameras all around the vehicle. And when it comes to radar, that definitely leans on radar a little bit more heavily for that driving. But for the driver visuals, which also, by the way, have been running on the Rivian Autonomy stack for a very long time. Um, but when it comes to the visuals, it's definitely almost entirely cameras with just maybe a little bit of radar filling the gaps in. Um, so I'm really interested to see how this changes because I'm certain that as this system matures, we'll probably see the reliance on radars versus cameras change a little bit. Um, but thanks for coming along for the ride. Uh, I definitely will be doing some more experimentation. So if you have any ideas of things that you'd like to see, let me know. If you're just interested in seeing testing content, uh, let me know because I probably will be talking a lot more about autonomy because I think it's fun. Hey everyone, um, I'm about to do some more testing with the Rivian Autonomy. Last time I did some, it seemed like y'all were into it, so I decided to share it along. <laughs> Certainly not gonna put that in. <laughs> Whoopsie!